Uh, many's asked, what, what made impact in your life as far as maybe something that impacted your life for military missions? Of course, I served God all the way through my time in the service. One of the highlights that I did have in Desert Storm, I was able to lead Bible study, was able to preach to my unit. I watched several get saved. Uh, but you never know when you're going into a combat zone what may happen. Uh, the Lord uh, chose fit to take three of my friends and uh, through the operations that we were involved with. And I decided uh, there and then uh, that every military family ought to have an opportunity to hear a clear presentation of the gospel. So we've sold our lives out to reaching our heroes. AFBM has some goals. Number one, we desire to plant churches. Number two, underneath the auspices of the local church is uh, servicemen centers that we minister to veterans home and veterans facility. Uh, with so many coming back, uh, dealing with PTSD, it's not nothing new. It's been around. It's been called shell shock, freeze. It's just been more identified. And so with this in mind, what we did, uh, our general director took several years of notes, of course, himself uh, experienced several traumatic events, uh, decided that we need to take the seven things that the VA recognizes as symptoms and address it from a biblical perspective. We're here to tell you uh, that God has now given us a great Wounded Spirits Institute. We have 40 uh, outreach groups now. We have several camps and regional conferences that we're involved in. Uh, and, of course, our family is involved in assisting uh, Dr. Carragher's in these camps, training, training churches, uh, having seminars. And so we're thankful for this. And out of this, the Wounded Spirits have evolved. We have seen thousands saved. Matter of fact, within a couple days, I can't give you the date because of the sensitivity, we have a crew landing on ground in Las Vegas that will provide grief counseling. And uh, we have several churches involved with this now. We have two of our board members, and we have two of our missionary families that will be on ground uh, very soon. And so if you will pray for that. God's been good with AFBM. We now have 42 families. Uh, we're growing by two to three families a year. And uh, we're sending one to two families to the field. Uh, we are thankful uh, that last year we sent the Wayne Keys family ministering outside of Fort Bragg there. And uh, a retired Army chaplain uh, sent out of Bobby Robertson's church. Please remember Bobby Robertson in prayer as he was diagnosed uh, just with a brain tumor, if you would. Uh, then we also sent uh, uh, the Keys family, but we sent the Glens to Italy. Uh, we're thankful that the Lord allowed us to work with their pastor and their church sending them. And uh, to, on Monday morning, we're sending a family to Korea and South Korea. And so you pray for them. Matter of fact, I was looking at your list. Brother Barry Hoffman's been a big help to our family going in Korea, trying to help them get into country. Barry Hoffman's a good man. We, we've uh, been able to recommend several families to his church. And so we thank God for the Hoffmans and, and, uh, uh, and uh, the closeness of uh, that ministry to help our missionary. They'll be leaving on Monday morning if you'll pray for them. We've got uh, several that are in the midst at uh, raising the support, finishing up. we got the Schrock family going to Fairchild Air Force Base, starting a church. The Soul families will be starting a serviceman center with a sister church at Fort Hood. The Phelps family uh, with PTSD camp, starting camp. The Krasinskis are ministering at Fort Benning with all them AIT soldiers. They minister with a battalion almost every night. Last year, they had over 642 saved, and we're thankful for that. Uh, the Lewis family is working with PTSD and the in-prison ministry, and uh, they're there in Florida. The Jones families are right outside of Fort Gordon. He's an Army Reserve chaplain. God's using him a great way, also with a serviceman center, and Mike Marshall, Jr., is ministering up near the naval uh, or the uh, na uh, the station. Uh, I believe it's the naval station up near uh, near uh, Great Lakes. And so, if you'll uh, remember these, uh, of course, uh, our our family has been serving in missions uh, for several years. For 13 years, we spent overseas planning and uh, rebuilding churches. But due to medical, uh, the doctors felt that we would be better back here. So we placed our ministry where we've been involved as the deputation director 
And so our thrust is the recruiting. We're in several churches and Bible conferences and college recruiting missionary families. And we thank God for that privilege. Also, we look for areas to plant churches. Then we believe missionaries are sent out of local churches. Uh, so I assist Brother Doug uh, serving uh, with him and training our missionaries, preparing them for the field. Also, we're heavily involved with training churches close to military installations on how to have an effective military type ministry. Then the a third area, we're involved with assisting our missionaries uh, with their church plants around the globe. Of course, God has now allowed us to be able to serve at Fort Hood, Texas. Just a little idea, 48,000 active duty personnel. Family members, 189,000. Uh, retirees, uh, there's 38,000. 18,000 government workers. So really, uh, clean Texas, Fort Hood. Fort Hood is really a, uh, a city surrounding a military city. And so we're just so thankful for your goodness to us. Uh, we could not do it without you. I want you to know uh, we, we pay for all these camps that we go to. Uh, we, we do many scholarships. We send several packages. We've given, uh, God's been so good, and, and we're able to make our ministry function, number one, because of your prayers. Number two, because of your faithful giving. I want you to know we don't take that for granted. And I want to say thank you uh, for everything that uh, you have done. I, I wish I could tell you a story over and over how people have cried in our arms at our camps and what God's doing. And uh, what a joy on Saturday morning as a result of your faithful giving. I get to pray with a missionary family that I've got to work close with the last couple of years. And uh, it's been an honor. My family and I couldn't do that. We couldn't train them if it wasn't for you. And I want to say thank you for believing in us, uh, believing what we're doing. And if you have any questions, please uh, see us uh, back at our uh, booth in the back. And I'll tell you, this is a very mission-minded church. And Pastor Ross, thank you for your years of faithful service. It was an honor to have dinner. And then our pastor friend, we met several years ago. And uh, so that tells us we're getting older, brother. Amen. <laughs> And uh, he remembers when we just started out. And uh, so I praise God for our assistant pastor here. Just a great church in the school. And uh, I, you know, what a testimony. You all are taking over the whole block. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so nobody's going to have a choice to go anywhere else. They're going to have to pull into Heritage Baptist Church. And uh, what a blessing. And the young people here, man, I, I thank God. I told my wife tonight, I said, now I'm remembering. I, I, I got young timers. Amen. And the things come in and out. And uh, I, I remember how many young people you had here. What a blessing. And uh, so, but I, we're going we're gonna to get done because I want you to be able to take them tests tomorrow in school. Amen? <laughs> amen, young people? Amen. They're like, amen, brother. <laughs> you know, we do love the young people. And, uh, but I work with young people all the time, so uh, we want to recruit you for the Lord's work. Amen? amen. And uh, turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 2, 2 Timothy chapter number 2, in verses 1 through 4, and uh, the Bible says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in the Christ Jesus, and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a good soldier. Notice he said endure hardness as a good soldier. Then he said that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now, throughout this chapter, uh, Timothy is addressed by Paul, number one, as a son. He said, Timothy, you're, you're my son in the faith. You know, thank God we're sons and daughters. Amen. And I thank God those who have invested their life in me. Uh, then in verse number 12, he said, uh, Timothy, he said, I want you to know in this Christian life, you, you may have some suffering. There's things that God may bring your way to bring honor and glory for him uh, that you may go through that suffering. And, uh, you know, the book of 1 Peter addresses our, our suffering. And, uh, uh, and so uh, he said, Timothy, sometimes you may have to suffer. And then he, he said in verse number 15, he said, uh, you're a student. He says, study to show thyself approved, a 
workmen that needeth not to be ashamed. And really, we all ought to continue to be students of the word. And then he highlights in verse number 24, and he said, And the servant of the Lord shall not strive, but be gentle unto all men apt to teach. He said, Timothy, if you're going to go to the next level, he said, I want you to know you need to be a servant. You know, ministry is about servitude. Ministry is about giving ourselves to others and to each other and helping but then in verse 3 and 4, he, he tells them uh, that you're going to be a soldier. He said, a life's going to bring many different things your way. And he said, in order to get through this, you need to endure hardness at times. And you need to be able to please him who hath called you. Uh, you know, he talks about over there in Ephesians, he talks about uh, the spiritual warfare taking on to you the whole armor of God. Uh, but I like that verse where it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and so he said Timothy I I just want you to be a good soldier now I, I don't know everything about soldiering but I I would like to take a few things tonight I'd like to draw an analogy I'd like to take the life of a soldier and compare it to a Christian soldier if I may tonight and uh, may we ask the Lord to help us father uh, thank you Lord for your goodness thank you for your mercy uh, may you uh, bless as only you can on your word in Jesus name Amen. If you will, uh, you go over to Luke chapter number 19, and we'll just highlight a few things. And, of course, uh, uh, this is a great story. Uh, uh, the Lord's coming into Jericho, and uh, we see old Zacchaeus there. And, and uh, I like Zacchaeus. Uh, we have a lot in common. Me and Zacchaeus have short man's disease. Amen. And uh, uh, the Lord uh, knew Zac uh, Zacchaeus was there. Zacchaeus knew the Lord was coming. And so he was, the Lord was coming to town, of course, uh, he was a tax collector, and, you know, he, he probably in his position didn't have to have new anything to do, but he's heard all about what Jesus was doing, things that was going on in the life of Christ, and, and so Zacchaeus said, hey, I'm, I'm going to have to see the Lord. Now, Zacchaeus was smart, if you ask me. He didn't, he didn't try to look over somebody. You ever go to a ball game and someone that's big sits in front of you, and you're trying to look around and trying to get around, you're standing up. And, uh, but Zacchaeus said, listen, he says, I'm not going to fight the crowd. Right. He said, I'm going to get up in this little sycamore tree, and I'm going to look for the Savior. And uh, you know what? Jesus noticed his efforts, and what did he say? He said, Zacchaeus, you come down. He said, salvation's coming to your house today. He said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save uh, that which is lost. So I kind of want to look at a soldier's enlistment. Now, I, you know, anybody that's been military, you, now some of you may have not had a chance to, uh, how do I say this? You did not have a chance to enlist. Maybe you were the one that uh, they told you, uh, you're going to come up here, you're going to get a draft number, and this is where you're going, amen? Uh, you're either going to be Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard. And uh, so, so uh, but uh, maybe uh, many of us have, that's been in the military, uh, we were uh, recruited. I could remember the recruiter's name. His name was Sergeant Walters. To make a long story short, I, I was called to preach at a young age, but I kind of stepped out of God's perfect will. And, and uh, I was thinking about my buddy and I, and I won him to Christ. He was a staunch Catholic. And uh, I'll never forget, we begin to talk, and I begin to think, well, maybe uh, uh, my whole family was military. I was so proud of my family, and I was proud of my country. I was proud of that flag, praise God. And, uh, and so we begin to go up and talk to the recruiter, and I made a decision that maybe uh, there could be some benefits with not only fighting for my country, uh, putting a, but maybe down the road there could even be a few benefits that there could be there. And so I'll never forget, Scott and I went up to... Uh, Warren, Ohio, and we got in there, and, and I'll never forget, man, we looked around the branches, there was the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, and I'll, I'll never uh, forget that Sergeant Walters, that guy from the Army, stood up and he said, I see a fine-looking soldier with to be coming through that door. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget, we got on there, we, we went in, and we said, uh, uh, sir, we're, we're thinking about uh, wanting to, to join the Army, my buddy and I would like to, maybe go in on the buddy system. And so I'll never forget, we, we took the pre ASVAP test, and it looked like we were going to do pretty good on it. And we went up, and uh, we began to talk about uh, jobs and things like that. And, and I'll never forget it. You know, he said, I could see you doing great things in the Army. And, and uh, kind of 
you know, he began to tell me, he said, son, where are you going to get a job at? Getting two and a half days vacation a month. I was like, wow, that's pretty good for an 18 year old, amen? A two and a half days vacation year. I said, you add that up over a whole year. I said, that's pretty good, about 30 days a year. And he said, paid in bonuses. And I said, wow. I said, that's really good. And so I'll never forget, we began to look at jobs. And, and uh, I, you know, I was thinking because of my background going to church, I said, I'd like to look at the maybe being a, I knew I could be a chaplain because I didn't have the education at that time. I was just graduating high school, and, but I, I, I did tell him what I do. I was born again. I'd like to be able to serve God while he's in. He said, I know a job. How would you like to be a chaplain's assistant? And so he showed me this film of a chaplain's assistant. And I saw, the, I saw this chaplain's assistant getting ready for Catholic service. <laughs> and I was like, wow, man. If I do this, my pastor's going to have my head. I was like, can you imagine? And then I, and I hope, I hope this won't fit on me, but I, I saw the, I saw the, the chaplain's assistant getting the wine ready for communion. <laughs> well, I grew up in church, man. We didn't, we, we use grape juice, amen? Right. And, uh, right. and, uh, man, I was like, man, if I do that, man, the pastor's really going to get me, man. I was like, well, I like some waters. I said, I, I don't think this is the job for me. And so Scott and I were sitting there, we was like, uh, I know what we'd like to do. I said, he said, you can do about anything you want to do, son. He said, you got a high GT score. I said, how about a tanker? He said, I knew the Army needed a man like you. He said, you look like a tanker, son. He said, you're not too tall. He said, you'll fit right in there. He said, son, I can see you being a sergeant major one day. Man, my head was really getting big. And I'll never forget it. He showed me that video, that tank going down that green path, and I said, that's me. I said, matter of fact, Sergeant Walters, I'd like to go overseas. He said, man, the Army's really going to like you. He said, we can arrange for you to go overseas, see you get done uh, with basic training. Man, he was good. But I said, Sergeant Walters, I said, we got one problem. I said, I'm only 17. I said, I turned 18 in June. And he said, well, he, we can put you on the delayed entry. That's where you'll be in. Then you'll go down to square and again affirm. And he said, but we got one thing. I said, you got to go convince my parents. I said, I think my dad is. He said, that's all right. He said, uh, he said, I'll meet you. I'll pick Scott up and go talk to his parents. He said, I'll pick you up and we'll go talk to your parents. And I'll never forget we pull up and Sergeant Walters pulls out a comb and a brush out of that glove box and combs his hair like that. And he takes on a little group, whatever he got out of it, he smelled good. And he got out of the car, he had his class A's on him. He got up to the door and I kind of peeked, I said, Dad, Mom, I said, uh, Sergeant Walters, here's the United States Army recruiter. And he walked in and he immediately went to my mom and he said, uh, Mrs. Pierce, what an honor to meet you. I know where your son gets his graciousness. And your husband is a very fortunate man to have you. <laughs> man, I just, I just hit the buttons, man. Before I knew it in half an hour, my parents was signed papers. Man, man I'll tell you, he, he was recruiting to the highest. You know, see, that's that soldiers. That's a time of learning. I mean, a t the recruiter. Hey, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He's recruiting men and women, boys and girls, to come for salvation. Amen. Right. And not only is he recruiting for salvation, but he's recruiting people just to be surrendered tonight. Amen. Right. Listen, I, I recruit and go to a lot of Bible college. I go to a lot of churches. Listen, who's going to be the next family sent out of Heritage? Who's going to be the next family to work with Armed Forces Baptist Missions out of Heritage Baptist Church? Amen. Hey, I'm looking for some missionaries, amen. I'm looking for some people to, to, to su just surrender, to say, I'd be willing to go. But then there's the requester. That's the MEP station. That's your next step. You go down there, and you go get a full physical, amen. I mean, they check you head to toe. You sports guys and you ladies, you understand all what they do. And, man, they got down there, and they, they begin to ask you all kinds of questions and about your history and, and – uh, Man, I, I had to confess some of my sin before I went to church. And he said, listen, son, I'm not asking you to tell me your whole past. I just want to make sure you're not on acid and you're not a drug addict. I said, no. And uh, so I told him things. And, 
And uh, I said, you're not going to tell my dad and mom, are you? He said, no, we'll keep it between us. And uh, so that was good, thank God. I, I did some confessing to my parents in time, too, when I was younger. And uh, sure enough, we went down there, and uh, we were good, signed all of our paperwork, and uh, we were in, we affirmed. But, you know, I think of the requester and the Lord's work. I think of the sweet Holy Spirit of God. Do you remember when the Holy Spirit of God came to you and said, listen, that's truth, you need to be saved? Thank God the Holy Spirit comes to you and still ministers to you and said, hey, this is right. Then the third part of a soldier enlistment, you're, you're now a recruit. Now, you're not a soldier, but you're a recruit. You know, same way, we're a, we're a child of the king when we get saved. But we're not a mature Christian. We're babies. Uh, the Bible says that we grow in grace. Thank God we're still growing in grace. Amen. And, uh, uh, but then the second part of I think about a soldier enlistment, I think about a soldier's education, 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter number 2, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and hypocrisies and envyings and all evil, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And we're talking about if you're so tasted that the Lord is gracious and, and uh, the many things going on here about the goodness of God, and, but growing in grace. I think about a soldier's education. It's a time of learning. Boy, I'll never forget, man. I, I flew out of Cleveland Hopkins Airport. I, I, got on a, I got on a flight, and I landed at Louisville, Kentucky. There was this big green army bus waiting for me, man. So we got on there, and I'll never forget, there was all kind of guys that were recruited in our class. And we were on there, Scott was on there, I was on there. And uh, man, I was telling Scott, there was a little bit bigger guy. I said, he's going to get sent to the pork chop. Amen. And uh, let's forget, there was this guy on there had hair down to here, man. He was headbanging, man, listening to music and stuff. I said, hey, dude, I said, looks like you're going to do all right. He said, shut up. I said, well, I don't I, I told him, I said, that was on there. I said, man, I can't tell you, he's taking drugs or something. And uh, so we're looking at all these guys with personality, you know, Scott and I's up front. But I'll never forget, man, we, we pulled that bus out of Fort Knox, Kentucky. And lo and behold, this drill sergeant gets on that bus and starts screaming, Get off my bus right now! Son, you life is changing right now. I'm going to be your mom. I'm going to be your dad. I'm going to be your grandpa. And anybody else you think you want, to, you want someone to care about, I'm going to provide all the care that you need. <laughs> I was like, wow. Man, they were screaming and yelling and they drug us off this bus and had us in line and started in process. I'll never get some big dude was on that bus. He stood up and that drill sergeant said, get on my knees, son, you're too tall. <laughs> I was like, oh my soul. And man, my life was changing. I'll never forget, we went in there and uh, we started getting through and uh, uh, the first thing, man, they, they took us into the haircut place, man. And I was, I was waiting because mine wasn't real long and you know, I always kept it pretty sh short, and I didn't want to act like I was Joe military, so I let it grow out a little bit, so I didn't want to think I was trying to be a know-it-all before I even knew anything, amen? And, uh, but that dude with the long hair went out there. And I'll never forget, I was standing by the door, and I was listening, and the guy said, well, tell me, son, how would you like it styled today? <laughs> he said, the guy said, well, do I really have a choice? He said, yeah, I got a choice. <laughs> he got man, I'll never forget acid man came out and he had his hair was bushed, man. It was beautiful. He was doing like all this. And I was like, that guy's gonna have a fun 13 weeks. And uh, I'll never forget we were getting issued dog tags, man. And, and uh, they came up there and they asked him one or two questions. Protestant or Catholic? I said neither. I said I like Baptist, please. They said, that's not what I asked you, son. Do you want Protestant or Catholic? I said, sir, I said, I appreciate Baptists. He said, you ain't got a choice in the matter. I said, well, I'm joining voluntary and commanding officers who looked over and said, I said, sir, if I'm going to die for my country and be willing to go out to lay my life on, I said, at least let me be a Baptist. The commanding officer said, make him a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, I'll never forget, we got in that old drill sergeant in screaming and yelling and having us go upstairs down there uh, doing inspections and things like that. And I'll, I'll never forget the, 
the real short drill sergeant he kind of did kumbaya with us, you know. He told his ass to go around and talk about why we came in the Army. And he said, I want you to know I'm a little different than the other drill sergeant. I was like, nah, this ain't right. And sure enough, he said, but the other guy is as mean as can be. Man, I'll never forget the next morning that other drill sergeant came in. He was throwing bumps out of the room. I was like, this guy must be from Vietnam, man. He must have shots fired at him. I said, this guy, I mean, this guy is fit to be tied. He was throwing wall walkers out the room, man. And he was throwing bumps in there. Man, I'll never forget. I, 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 I take a restroom break, man. I'm in there. I'm like, wow. And the guy, the guy next to me says, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm not suicidal. I said, I just need to get my breath in here, man. I was like, this stuff's crazy going <laughs> on. And uh, I said, life has changed. But, you know, we learned a lot of different things, man. We begin to, we begin to learn how to march. And we begin to learn how to go to the ranges. And we begin to learn how to fire. And, and you know, we, we begin to learn a few things. I don't know if you ever would get. We went to march. Oh, 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 I got to go. Mama, mama, can't you see what this army's done to me? Mama, mama, can't you see what this army's done to me? Oh, 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 I gotta go. Ain't no sense of looking down. Ain't no discharge on the ground. Ain't no sense of looking down. Ain't no discharge on the ground. Oh, 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 oh. Swung me around, I had no hair. <laughs> Put me in a barber chair. Swung me around, I had no hair. Oh, 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 I gotta go. Used to drive a Chevrolet. Now I'm marching all the way. Used to drive a Chevrolet. Now I'm marching all the way. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, we were learning to march, and I'll never forget, man, we had the Marine Corps tankers at Fort Knox. And you Marines are going to love this. I saw a couple of USMC shirts. I saw my brothers in the United States. Man, the, Marine, the Marines can march, man. I mean, hey, hey, you know, we're like, and then here we are. They're training with us tankers at Fort Knox. We're like, hey, we're not letting a bunch of Marines. We didn't say Marines. We said some other words. And it wasn't bad words, you know. And, we said jarheads, you know. And he knew it was coming. And I said, we ain't letting them jarheads out march as a talk to We're like, we're trying to get in step by the They know the DNC. They know Marine Corps history. Now. I mean, they were looking good. So all of a sudden, we were talking a bunch of stuff to each other out there. And all of a sudden, before Chow, we broke into a fist fight, man. I mean, there was people getting knocked around, uh, black eyes, fat lip, and their drill instructors came out and went loose on their Marines. And our drill sergeants came out. We were crab walking up on the side of the hill. Oh, man, it was a sight to behold. We decided that we wasn't messing with the Marines. <laughs> man, they didn't mess with us. We didn't mess with them. But them boys could march, and that was an experience. But we learned how to fire. We went out to go to the ranges. But it was a time of learning. And any, anybody, you know, I think one of the memorials, you go to the gas chamber. Man, when you get in there, they fill that thing up with CS, and what they do, they, they want you to go in, they, you can feel that stuff boiling. And so they feed you all this food before you even go. They, it's probably one of the best days that they feed you. Man, they were feeding everybody chili mac. And I decided I'm not eating chili mac today. I'll eat just a little bit. 
And lo and behold, what they do, they would, they would put that CS, man, that stuff would be like frying heavy. And you'd get in there, you'd feel it tingle, and what they said, you'd come in. They said, uh, we want you to fill it, but we'd like you to take off your mask and clear it. And then seal it and put it back on. And I'll never forget, uh, a couple other guys were next to me, and what they would do, they'd come by to you and say, hey, uh, what we're going to do, we want you to take off your name and mask and uh, take off that mask and uh, repeat your name, rank, and social security number. I'll never forget any of this stood there. Not any of this. Blah, 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 and he started choking. Man, uh, his eyeballs looked like he was falling out. And man, all of a sudden, they, they, after he was already falling over, and he ran out the door. And I, I said, I'm next. I said, I'm not doing this. He came and he said, Pierce, take off your mask. And I went like this. He punched me in the gut, pulled off my mask, hit me in the back of the head, and I'm, I'm, I got stuff coming all out of my face, my nose, I'm on the ground like this. I'm swinging and punching anybody I can find. He says, go salute the cat. And I run by the window and I, I started saluting the cat. By the time I couldn't see him, I had two or three drill started shoving me around and they were waiting to last me until I was almost dead. Then they finally shoved me out the door and there's a big tree, man, that was there. People were bouncing off that tree at Fort Knox. Drill sergeant, my arms are open, my arms are flapping. Man, I'm watching guys puke everywhere. I mean, there's things coming out of a body that I'm in. Everything you have in your body is coming out. I mean, I mean, there's boogers everywhere. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm just, I'm terrible. It's terrible. Man, all that chili mac, it was terrible. But it was a time of learning. See, you were learning how to be a soldier. You know the Christian life is a time of learning. Uh, you graduate and you go to your first duty station. It's a time of living. Because now when you graduate, you're a soldier, you're a sailor, you're an airman, you're a marine, you're a coast guardsman. You're living the things that you learn. You know what the Christian life is living? The things that we've learned over the years. The things that are taught and preached from this pulpit. But then sometime... You may have to go to a hot spot in the part of the world that you never thought that you may have to go. And you don't have time to relearn it. You don't have time to per se think about it. You lean on to what you learn. And sometimes, really, folks, the Christian life is we don't have time to, we rely on what we learn because there's going to come a time when we don't really feel like praying and reading our Bible because of the pressure that we're going through, the struggle. But we know it's right and we still do it. Have you been there? Yes. You go through a bis disappointment. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's family. Maybe I saw the prayer list of cancer. Sometimes the only thing we know to do is to lean. I don't have the answers for everybody. I just know God is who he is. Right. And we just lean on God. It's a time of leaning. But then I think 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Let a man so count of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. I think of a soldier's enlistment. I think of a soldier's education. I think of a soldier's expectation. Number one, I think about this. You know, uh, the Army got rid of the blues and, I mean, the greens and went to the blues now. They used to wear these for formals. Now they wear it all the time. And I, I thank God for that. But I'm going to tell you what, I like the marine blues. You see a marine in his blue, it's automatic respect, isn't it? They look good. They're sharp in them. I think of the Navy, the whites. Man, they look sharp. I think of the Air Force blues. I think of our Coast Guard. Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Army. But each uniform represents that branch that's represented. Folks, a soldier's expectation. You and I represent the commander of the universe, Jesus Christ. We ought to be reflective of him in our life. Does our life say that we're all about Jesus? Then I say this, a soldier's expectation, not only to be reflective, but he, we need to be reliable. Can God count on us? 
that soldier has to be ready to go in a moment's notice. I, our last place that we served in, they had the 10 special forces there. Them guys had to be ready to go within 24 hours. Within hours, they had a plane rated low to go. They were ready to go on that special ops plane. But they had to be reliable. Are we reliable? Can God count on us? And then I say this, we need to be ready. That soldier has to be ready to deploy in a moment's notice. Let me ask you, are we ready to deploy for eternity in a moment's notice? Amen. Wow. I want to be ready. Amen. I want to be reliable. I want to be reflective. Thank God many of you have lived for God for years. You're a good soldier of the cause. Let's just be who he wants us to be. Let's pray with heads bowed, eyes closed. I'll just ask the pianist to come. I, I don't want to take for granted. How many would say, Brother Pierce, I remember a time in my life I enlisted in the Lord's army. The Lord came to me and, and told me that I was a sinner, told me there was a penalty of my sin. I realized Jesus died for me, and I repented of my sin and asked him to come out and save me. How many could say, Brother Pierce, I know that I'm a child of God. You could raise your hand. God bless you. You could put your hands down. Maybe you're here tonight you'll say, Brother Pierce, I don't know for sure if I die tonight, I'd go to heaven. Pray for me. Just slip your hand up. I won't embarrass you, I promise. Slip it up, put it down. Listen, maybe, maybe, you're, uh, maybe you need to say, I just want to surrender my life more. Maybe you're, you're bad at it. Maybe God's dealing with you about missions. Maybe there's something you want to do with the military. I don't know that in your life. But are you willing to give yourself? Let's stand together for just a few minutes as she plays a hymn of invitation. 